Hi, I'm Brian Segnet with Xerox, and I'm here with Michelle Fornell, the Senior Systems Engineer on the Xerox Versant 180. We're going to have a look today under the hood, and let's start off with talking about the Versant 180. We know it's 80 pages a minute, and I can also get a performance package option. And it has an inline spectrophotometer. Whereabouts is that inline spectrophotometer located on the press? So obviously it has to be out after you print your, mm -hmm. uh, your uh, print, and then you have to scan them. So instead of uh, having somebody offline do the scanning by hand, we offer a, a device uh, which is uh, produced by x right okay? And it's located right under those two covers, right inside here. And uh, the location is right pretty much in the middle, and it's scanned from inboard to outboard of the print. So, and so that's really pretty terrific. What that's going to do, it's going to save me, it's going to save operator error, right, yep. where I don't have to scan that's manually. That's correct. Right, and I'm also going to be able to linearize the press with the DFE, so the color that I get today is the color that I'm going to be able to get again and replicate in and another... All our data show that's very, very consistent. Terrific. And, and that's really pretty unusual, right, because I'm measuring actual spectral color uh, with an ILS, right? So correct. it's located right there. Yep. I understand uh, this, this module runs a little bit cooler as well, so we yep. can run that faster speed. This, this module is used for three, three different uh, uh, options. Obviously, the inline spectrometer, mm -hmm. decurling, Decurling, right. yes. We, uh, mm -hmm. We're going to talk about a decurler later on in the IoT, right. in the printer. Mm -hmm. But also, if there's a uh, curl induced after the print is made, we have a, a decurler built in here. And also, what you just mentioned, a cooling modules. If the print is too warm, go to the next device, it cool down. It is. Terrific. So let's go ahead and let's start about, let's talk a little bit about the paper path. Yep. If I'm a sheet of paper, I know we have something called uh, IRA, Integrated Registration Alignment, right? That gives our customers this amazing front-to-back registration and great alignment, right? Yep. So, so let's how have does that happen? Let's have some fun here. So uh, like you described earlier, very small paper path, very clear and uh, straight paper path. Right, and, and so I'm going to be able to do 350 GSM, but I'm going to be able to just simplex that, right? Yep, yep, okay. yep. Yeah, and you can duplex uh, 300, up to 300 up GSM. Up to 300 yep. GSM, and if I want to duplex 350 GSM, then I would step up to a Versant 3100. That's correct. Okay, so what you just mentioned earlier with the IRA system, mm -hmm. everything, the magic part is done right here. Paper come in from 3123 or from the high cap feeder, 367, 8 or 9, if you have two high cap The different feeder. trays, yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, a arrive in position right at, at this entrance, and there, here there's multiple sensors who measure the exact position of the paper. So I heard these things called contact image sensors, right? Yep. And then, so they're all throughout the print path. Yes, the main one is located right here. Okay, we, we know this position because at install from manufacturing, we know this uh, baseline of the paper. Mm -hmm. and then from there, any variation is measured from those sen th and, this main and sensor so and the other one. That happens automatically. As yes. an operator, yes. I don't need to do anything. That's Every correct. sheet of paper that I'm going to run yes. through, it's going to look at it and it's going to go ahead and it's going to get me that, yeah. that IRA. Okay. So this information is measured here. Send this to the controller of, mm -hmm. the, of the printer. Okay, the, the, the information is calculated send this to the laser which is located right under the uh, the toner there's a section right here underneath here you see the four little openings so we actually have a laser then that's writing writing yes. writing that image on, yeah, there's on that two, page there's two lasers mm -hmm. two per colors mm -hmm. okay who are doing the jobs of separation of colors and then put this image on the uh, drums and so that's writing, it's writing a, uh, a, a, a C, an M, a Y, and a K image, that's correct. right? So that's it correct. takes that laser beam, yep. it's splitting it up, and it's writing my image right on yes. that piece so of paper. We're going to go back to the, the, to the paper path in a few seconds. Let's talk about imaging like we just described. Okay. There. So we're going to put this out for about 30 seconds because those drum are, are Yeah, light so this sensitive. is a little bit light sensitive. You don't want to leave it open all the time, right? Because it that's could correct. impact your image quality. So the image, like I said, is transferred to the laser. The laser started to write down the information right on the drum, OK? Next to the drum, there's a developer housing here mm -hmm. who mix the toner in the material to make sure you'll be able to make this image transfer to the next section, okay? So again, you get one drum, and, and one housing per color. And, and you know, the nice thing, these are all customer replaceable, right? So if, if uh, I see an image, I need to do something, I can just go ahead and I can pop it out, right? Terrific. Okay. Compared to other 
device in a in a right in competitive a products sometimes it, a it's a lot more, more difficult or i got to call a service tech to do it right yes that's correct so this yeah. image is transferred to another belt which i don't have access here access here mm -hmm. it's called the uh, ibt belt the intermediate belt imaging mm -hmm. system transfer system and then it's transferred back to the paper path when the <coughs> when the paper move to the station it transfer using the second BTR so bias, the second transfer, bias transfer, transfer okay okay and, and that's what kind of like an electrical zap that yep. it's getting okay yeah and Be then the image is transferred from the IBT mm -hmm. to the paper via the second a and so I'm using electricity positive and, and, and negative mm -hmm. to either uh, pull that image or pull that toner down into the paper or or kind of repel it is that what's yes, happening yes exactly mm -hmm. And then you, did, you did your homework. I'm very happy. That's it. I, 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 I read our, uh, our brochure. So if I look at this, this is the, uh, the Fuser module. Yes, I just want to go back here a little bit. Oh, that, okay, Fuser. Yeah. So obviously when you print, uh, you have to make sure the, the, the toner it, uh, stay on the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So we're using fusing device, okay? In the past, you know, traditional fusing is a, we're using a roll. Yeah which was do a very good job, but there's some side effect to this, like gloss differential, mark, because if you use a, uh, the same paper over and over and then you right. use a larger paper, mm -hmm. you're gonna have some uh, IQ defect. So, so that's kind of the advantage of uh, belt fusing or a compact belt fuser? That's correct. So and this technology uh, is com coming from our uh, bigger device, the color press, mm -hmm. color press device that we minimize here. And we're using, like you just described, a, a belt, belt transfer system mm -hmm. so instead of having a roll we have this belt which which make the, the, the fusing and temperature very consistent right so print to print so that's the reason why i'm able to get the fast speed this is the reason why on a performance package i can run 350 gsm i'm holding my heat yeah. or even on mixed media where i need the shed heat right i can drop my heat fast so i can i can get my paper but i think Maybe more importantly, even the ability to run envelopes because you don't need to change this fuser out. That's Some right. competitive devices, I've got to do a fuser swap. Yep. I'm going to be able to run 350 GSM and envelopes all on that same fuser. That's correct. Okay? And I understand... So the reason I, I, I interrupted you yeah. earlier and I do it again, yeah. okay, <laughs> is when we do the side one and side two, you, you're going to go with side one, you print your, your image like we described earlier, print the paper, now we're going to fuse it, and when you depending on the material you're using, the media you're using, mm -hmm. the, the paper is going to shrink a little bit, okay? Because of the heat. Yes, the Got heat it. will shrink okay. the paper. We talk about, you know, 0 0.01 millimeters, right. but when you do a business card, you want to make sure that... Because I'm cutting you maintain this. So, so we know that for a fact that the paper is... But that's true on every press, right? That's because correct. I'm using heat, right? Yep. And there's moisture in that paper, and when you go to maybe 300 degrees Fahrenheit, right? You, you take some of that moisture out and you get some shrinkage. So believe me or not, under this cover here, we have a little sensor, we measure the temperature. Aha, uh -huh. okay? okay. So now we build a bunch of tables for all the papers we're supporting, you know, 220 GSM coated, 300 GSM uncoated, uh, large so, paper, small paper. So that paper. sensor is then doing all that calculation. Right, so what we do is, depending on the temperature here, if it's a short run or a long run, it will vary. Yeah. So we sure. measure this, we send this to the controller, and we're like, okay, for after an hour, my temperature raised by two degrees uh, Celsius, right. or five degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit. I need to shrink my image or enlarge my image on side two to be able to, to match my image perfectly. Okay. We do this on the fly. And so it's looking at uh, temperature. Is it also looking at humidity? Is that a factor? The, the, we always do this for years. Right. Okay. Machine always, inside the machine, we use, we measure the temperature the humidity and all the zero graphic process is very sensitive to those things. Yeah. Okay. We adjust this on the fly. Cl it's called the closed loop zero graphic yeah, process. Yeah. Closed loop. Uh, cl closed okay. loop processes. Right. right. Not okay. to be confused with calibrating. Not to be confused sure. with inline right. spectroscopy. And so that's kind of the advantage. All the Xerox technology. We've been doing it for years. We do it from uh, from the office right up to high end production, and we bring all of that technology to the yeah. Versant 180. That's okay. Great. Okay. Uh, so like, like I said, the paper path is very clear. Fuser, we're done. When we do a duplex, we're gonna curl here. We're gonna turn radius and send the paper back inside this. Uh, 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 right, so that's a pretty tight, you know, we've, we've got a pretty, this is a nice small footprint. And so that's the reason why we only can uh, auto duplex 300 GSM. Right. So the, uh, physically, um, turning a 350 GSM in that r small radius is almost impossible. Right, because that's a that's a stiff piece of paper if right. you're using right, uh, right, a right. 350. And obviously mm -hmm. on the 3100, 
it's a little a wider. I've got a lot more real estate, so I've That's got a correct. lot more so space to So you can to turn, turn that 350 GSM. Terrific. And, and I, I heard people do a little bit more than that. Okay. Okay. Just before the decurling, uh, the, uh, the uh, turning se inverter system, we have a little device right here called the uh, decurler. Okay. Two rolls who go back and forth depending off the media you're using today. So, so right here, these two rolls are actually my the, the kind of built-in inline decurler That's that That's correct. You would get. So we have multiple decurler in the system. Mm -hmm. Depending on what configuration you have, every machine in the printer by itself have is built-in decurler. But you know, Michelle, I think that's an important point because on, on some other devices that I could buy, you you have to buy a decurler. So if you buy even a base Versant 180 and you buy just the output catch tray, you have a decurler. Automatically, right. I've got an, an inline decurler. Correct. This one, you don't have to do anything with it. It's always adjusting by itself. Okay. Again, when you program your paper and it said I got coded 220 GSM, and then the next sheet is 300 GSM, this guy will on the fly change. Great. Okay. Okay. If for some reason you have a, a paper who don't uh, react like it's supposed to be, you can go and overrule those settings. And I can kind of push it or I can kind of pull it. Terrific. Okay. All right. And then to build on this, uh, if there's more curl coming out, uh, I described this earlier, we have a decurler in the Right, because normally, you know, I would then add this module, the interface decurler unit, when I'm adding in my finishing, because I'm going to be a lot more sensitive to uh, if I'm doing trim, you know, uh, yeah. two, two side trim, or if I'm doing full bleed, so I can actually control yeah, it from and there. And lastly, we have another one, and then uh, Rod's going to talk about this tomorrow morning with you. Mm -hmm. We have another decurler at the end. If you do book or package that are curling all the way to the end, that you can decurl more. Terrific. Okay? Okay. So Fuser, all right, what's next? What do we want to look at next? Uh, that's pretty much it for uh, in, uh, Under the Hood. All right, can, uh, Under the Hood, that's really terrific. If I wanted to know uh, some more information, what I would do is I would go to uh, Xerox.com. Everything is on Xerox.com on your, on your Versant pages, and I would look for a white paper. We've got a white paper on the Versant family, as well as an individual white paper on the Xerox Versant 180 Press. Okay, hey, Michelle, thanks a lot. Thank you.